Marty, we're sending you back to the future! So, um, what are you doing? So, I just thought I'd make some coffee before we do this video. So, um, we're going to make it in a proper cafetiere, but unfortunately what's happened is we've bought, instead of the actual granules, we've bought, by mistake, these beans. So oh, we need no. A, we need a coffee grinder to, to grind them up to make granules. Well, we, we, don't, so. we don't have a coffee grinder. Well, I just bought this coffee grinder on eBay. Um, it's an 80s one, but it's quite nicely styled. It's a Krups Caffeina. It's a 223A. And I believe the beans we just put in the top. Not sure how many we need to put in. Um, and then there's some adjustments on the back here. There's a timer for grinding, and there's also this little control which seems to be, I think, grain size. Mm. So I've set that to uh, just below average, and um, hopefully the granules will come out in this little cup. So. that coffee. Mmm, that smells lovely. Mm. Best put the kettle on. Yep. So I've actually got two of these coffee grinders. Um, one of these is movie accurate as it were, or at least the one, the model that was used in the movie, the other one isn't. So this one is a Krups Caffeina 223, and this is the 223A, which was apparently the one used in the movie. So the 223 is missing its lid, um, but that's interchangeable. The only uh, difference I can see between them is that the 223A has less logo to remove. So this one's got this black line and the logo's lower down. This one's just got the logo and it's the same on both sides. So I can't see any other difference. I had a feeling that perhaps the, the uh, plastic was clear instead of smoked acrylic looking at the pictures. But in fact, they both seem identical apart from just that logo. So I guess they used the 223A in the movie because it was easier just to remove that rather than the whole black line. So um, I bought both of these on eBay. If you have a look on the German eBay, eBay.de, you can find quite a lot of these by searching for Krups Caffeina. Make sure you get the 223 or the 223A. There is a shorter version as well. And lots of other Krups coffee grinders. One of these is in fact a US one which has got a US lead on, which is 110 volts, but I've taken the lead off already, so no one plugs it in in the UK, where we use 230 to 240. The other one is actually a European one, which uh, has a European adapter, but it's or a European plug, but it's rated at 230 volts, which is the one I've, uh, as you've seen, ground coffee with already. So the plan was I quite like to have one in the kitchen, so I was going to keep the plastics from the 223A, um, and put the insides from the US one in it and put the insides from the European rated 223A in the 223 and use this one to grind coffee in the kitchen and this one to make the Mr Fusion replica. However, the 223A is slightly more yellowed than the 223 and I don't know how that's going to match the lid for Mr Fusion. If you remember in the movie, the start of Battle of the Future 2, Doc opens this whole thing up and puts banana skins and cans in. This is actually on a base, which I'll talk about in a moment. So if I make that out of new white plastic, it won't match, which probably means I'll have to respray the coffee grinder, uh, which means I might as well just use the this one because I'll just paint over it with white paint. Then it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to leave that for now and come back to it. The base for this thing is quite big. It's like a big black bucket with a red catch and a white lid. So let's have a talk about that. So I'm using Autodesk 123D Design, which is free software. I've designed the base to, for this to be as movie accurate as I can. The big black piece here was originally a thing called a, a Singer Libroscope, which is a piece of 60s computer equipment, or at least the case which contained core memory. So um, that piece isn't really available to buy now. And if you could find one, I think the last one I saw that someone purchased cost them $700. So the lid of this was custom made for the movie, so I've drawn that as a separate piece. And I've also drawn all of the pieces of this catch as separate pieces so they can be printed separately in separate coloured plastic. There are quite a lot of details on this. There's um, a recessed section here and the same where the catch is and obviously we've got um, the hinge for the lid at the back 
So other than that, it's made of eight sections that just have these ribs on. So it's 12 inches across, or 30 centimeters in diameter. It's too big to fit in the 3D printer. So I've divided this into eight sections. So five of them are gonna be identical and three of them are unique based on the features. I could make a master for the one piece that's identical and make a mold and make a cast, but I only need five of those anyway, so it's probably best um, to have all of them in the same material. Obviously you could do it for all the pieces, but it's quite a lot of trouble. So um, I've then got one of those sections and divided it in two, so it will fit it within the height of my 3D printer. I'm planning to print these in ABS, so that I can stick the pieces together by welding them together with acetone. So ABS shrinks quite a lot as it cools, which is an issue because it means that you get warping and splitting between the layers of the print if the piece is too big. So that's about the biggest I can realistically print anyway. Um, I've turned one piece upside down so I can get support material, a minimal amount of support material under here. I consider uh, printing these horizontally in one piece. But there's an awful lot of support material to stick you know, under this piece for the whole length, which means there's nothing, there's no real surface area to stick the piece down to the print bed, which means for the length of the whole thing, which is about 15 centimeters, it would almost certainly warp and pull away from the support material. So let's have a go at 3D printing those. So here are the pieces that have come out of the printer. There's the first one, and there's the one with the support material. So we can see that those pieces are propped up here, and we should be able to remove that and clean it up with uh, minimal impact. These pieces have split slightly. You can see uh, on each side there, if I can get the light right, and that's just due to the layers building up pressure and shrinking as they build up. So we could fill those in with ABS dissolved in acetone, but for now I'm not going to bother, they're still actually the right length and they're flat, so we'll probably stick them together. Um, if I'd used PLA that probably wouldn't have happened because it wouldn't have shrunk so much. But I actually need to stick these pieces together now, so as I said before, ABS dissolves in acetone, which means I can just chemically weld them together, which I wouldn't be able to do in PLA. So I've just cleaned up where that support material was. Um, it's a bit of a mess still. You can see along this top surface, um, there's a bit of a mess where it's come off. The rest of it's not too bad. As I mentioned before, I could have printed it this way up, but then I'd have to have filled all of that with support material, which adds about half an hour to the print. So it took four hours to print these as it is, and I need to do eight of them plus the other bits and the lid. So that, that extra half an hour uh, between all eight sections comes to another four hours of printing. Um, the original piece, the Singer Librascape, was originally um, a very dodgy looking metal cast. Obviously they were made in the 60s. They weren't too bad quality, but you can see um, in Back to the Future they've obviously just bodged loads of black paint over it. And you can see lots of pit, uh, pits and imperfections. So the plan for this, the black you see now isn't the final finish. Once I've stuck all these together, I'm going to go over it and seal it with a very gloopy, thick, rubberized paint for sealing shed roofs. So I'm pretty sure that will fill in any um, minor imperfections we've got along the top edge there and obviously make the whole thing a uniform, sort of smooth but not glossy black. And it should cover up all the cracks and things. So the plan now is to chemically weld these together. As I said, you can dissolve ABS in acetone, which I got from apparently from Reeds of Chester. Actually, I got this off um, an eBay seller. So I've put some of the acetone into an, um, an HDPE, high density polyethylene container, which doesn't dissolve in acetone, so it's acetone safe. Um, very important, obviously, that you don't put it into an ABS container because it will just dissolve. You can also use glass, although be careful of some jars because they have a plastic seal on the lid, which does dissolve in acetone or a metal container. But obviously, you need to make sure it's airtight. So HDPE is 
uh, quite a useful thing to use. I again got that from eBay. So I'm going to use this child's paintbrush that I got from a, a magic painting set to just put a bit of acetone on the top and then we're going to try and put the two together and line them up perfectly and hopefully we can make them into one piece. Acetone evaporates quite quickly, so I need to try and get enough on there. And kind of feel the two edges are soft when you put them together. And it's just a case of getting them perfectly aligned. Pushing and holding them together. Just put the lid back on that. Obviously the vapour isn't great to breathe in. You should do this in a well ventilated area. So that's bonded together fairly well. We've got obviously just one eighth of the Mr. Fusion base so far, so I need to spend a very long time printing the other eighths. You can imagine that being completely round and the Mr. Fusion being on top, something like that. Hopefully you get the idea what's going on. So next time I'm going to come back and hopefully I'll have assembled the whole of the base and we can start working on the lid and the catch and um, putting it together. So you can download the model for this Mr. Fusion base from my website. I'm actually charging a small amount to help fund the projects. But you can get a 100% discount coupon if you fund me on my Patreon campaign to a minimum of $1 a month. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots. The link is in the description for the video. You should also like my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel for future updates, sneak peeks and more information on other projects.